Cindy and the camera. I'm here on the airstrip. Might be a bit windy here. I'll turn around this way. I'm here at the uh, on the airstrip. I've never been down on this part of Argentia before. And uh, I'm going around, I'm gonna visit a, a bunch of bunkers and that that Billy was telling me about. But anyway, here's the uh, here's the new gravity base that was under construction. See what's in around here. It goes in, but it's just too dark to see. God only knows how far that goes in. I haven't had a light with me. This is one of many. Just, uh, over in the far end. of the doors, eh? Again, probably ammunition storage. I'm gonna haul out my phone. Echo now, that sounds fairly deep in there. Haul out the phone here and get the light going. Wow. No, not that big. Again, I think it was ammunition storage. You see the eye beams up top here. It was obviously used for lifting. Had a, a carriage on it. And it could lift things here to the door. Whatever that was. Very cool. Here's another set. One I was just at up that way. And here's another one at a different angle this time. Oh, let's see what this one is. Same thing. I must just see a bit of garbage here in the valley. These are the same as like what's up in the White Hills. Just storage, just all. I'm gonna look up, see if I can research and look up some pictures. If I can find out what these were. As you might be able to see in the video, these run all along this area. You can see the top of the of these bunkers everywhere all the way down through the big one down there down by the beach not even gonna bother looking that one you know they all look alike this is the straight section Going right on up to that green, to the green buildings, the newer modern buildings. This is the side branch. Goes down that way, it was the way that I came up through. So the longest section is here, and then another long section goes straight on down, past where the, uh, where the gravity base is being built. And this is like the side, side angle of it. So that's the way that I'm gonna go down along here now. 
gonna see if I can get down. I don't know what this was here, but uh, this section comes in around, goes right around here in a circle, and there's a perfect bowl here in the middle. So now what was that? What was here at one time? Oh, the history, the history, the history. Looks like all concrete pads back where I was just here too. It was all so it was all like that. It's all concrete pads where I guess buildings were at one time. That's where the leading lights, the navigation, the nav lights. those bunkers so I'm so hoping I might have been able to get out here in the car but I'm not gonna bother it's probably uh, the only access out there might be from over here so anyway I'm not, uh, not gonna try but I flew in over this here last year myself and Barry came right on in over across couple of the last, I'd say, remaining old military buildings. Old base buildings. I don't see any other ones around. Fabrication. This one in here. That might have actually even been a part of this one. How many more of these are around? Wow. This one. I don't say <laughs> not likely that's gonna open. 1905. There's no echo. The guy I was just talking to there, he said, you come in here and you, certain rooms, there's no echo. And this has got to be one of them. This is 
so cool. There's something in the ceiling, like he was saying, that keeps it from. Uh, it looks like grass. There's no echo. Exactly the same as what's up in White House. Yeah, temporary asbestos storage. There's another spot. video is the beginning of a series of videos about dead and or abandoned airports and airfields from around the world. So let's get started. This is the story of Bristol Field Airport, commonly known as Naval Air Station Argentia. It is located in the town of Argentia, Newfoundland, Labrador, Canada, which is about a two hour drive from the city of St. John's. This airfield is part of a former US Navy base and was used during World War II and the Cold War. The airfield operated from August 28, 1941 and was decommissioned in 1973. The naval station remained an active base up until 1994. This location is also where one of the Marine Atlantic Newfoundland to Nova Scotia ferry terminals is located. 
I visited the airfield last summer and I've taken some photos and I'm going to include some more pictures as well as some footage taken from various people that visited or served at the base back in the day. The old footage and photos do not belong to me. So the story is that in January of 1941, during World War II, 400 families were displaced and the flat headland facing Placentia Bay was expropriated to build the base as well as an adjoining airfield. On July the 15th of that same year, the naval operating base was commissioned. Construction crews acted quickly in building the $53 million base and airfields. The base was quickly becoming the most expensive American overseas military installation built during World War II. The result was three runways measuring roughly 5,500 feet, 5,300 feet, and 7,400 feet, with more than 2,000 feet of wharf, a floating dry dock, aircraft hangars, ammunition magazines, and a seaplane base. Living quarters and storage space for 15 million gallons of gasoline, oil, and jet fuel were also constructed. Along with this, a railway branch line was built to connect the base to the National Railway Network in order to service the facilities at the base. In order to build the airfield, over 8.5 million cubic feet of peat, gravel, and earth had to be moved in order to build the facilities needed, which posed a great challenge. I'm mainly going to focus on the history of the airfield itself, and not so much the Navy or Army bases that were also based in this area, even though they played a key role in the airfield. On August 28, 1941, the multi-million dollar airfield at Naval Air Station Argentia was commissioned. In 1942, the U.S. Army established Fort McAndrew to provide security for the Navy base to an anti-aircraft battery. In 1944, Argentia served as one of its two stopover bases for the refueling, maintenance, and crew changes of the 6th United States Navy USN K-Class blimps that made the first transatlantic crossings of non-rigid airships. In 1946, following the Second World War, Fort McAndrew was transferred to the U.S. Army Air Force, which eventually became the United States Air Force or USAF in 1947. In 1948, Fort McAndrew was named McAndrew Air Force Base. During the Cold War, Argentia Naval Station became a key node in the Northwest Atlantic SOSIS network, helping detect Soviet nuclear submarines. The base was the target of several espionage attempts from the 1940s to the 1990s. In 1955, McAndrew Air Force Base was decommissioned and the facility was turned over to the U.S. Navy with USAF personnel moving into other locations in Newfoundland such as the Ermis Harriman Air Force Base in Stephenville and the Goose Bay Air Force Base. In 1973, the airfield was decommissioned and the land was transferred to the Government of Canada, which then transferred it to the provincial government for development in 1975. In 1994, the U.S. Navy left Argentina completely and the Navy base was decommissioned as the last personnel moved out. Until 1994, the runways of the former airfield were utilized by the Royal Canadian Air Cadets. The Air Cadets operated weekend glider familiarization through the Air Cadet Gliding Program. The Sweetshire SGS-233 was launched using an auto-tow launch method, utilizing the entire length of the runway services. Personnel were housed at the uh, Naval Station Argentia facilities. After the U.S. Navy Station was decommissioned, the glider program was operated without the facility support for a few years until the airfield was occupied for the Hydromet test facility owned by INCO. With the announcement that INCO development would not be using the airfield, the Air Cadet Gliding Program once again started using the airfield for gliding operations in May 2008. Today, most of the airfield structures have been demolished save for one hangar and an administrative building as you can see here in this photo. This hangar was used to store a small helicopter and a seaplane this naval station was using. Most of the runways and taxiways are still there, albeit very unkempt and grown over. You can still see some yellow line markings on the taxiways. There is a set of landing lights still intact but rotting away at the northwestern approach and of the longest 7400 foot runway. You can also see a series of weapon magazines surrounding the airfield where weapons and bombs were stored. The area still offers a lot to see and find for any urban explorer or history enthusiast like me. The town of Argentia is redeveloping the airfield into an industrial and business park. The construction of a Husky Energy oil platform on the north tip of Placentia is threatening to further destroy remaining structures of the airfield. I am not sure what will be of these former airport buildings, but perhaps they could make a good place to put an air museum of sorts to highlight the history of this interesting military base. So that's it folks, thank you for watching this video, there will be more to come, have a good day.